Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. Our heart is utterly deceitful and utterly sick. And unless the Holy Spirit is living inside of us and we have given our heart to God, we are walking in the way, thinking the thoughts, and acting according to what is wicked and ungodly. Because our natural disposition is what is contrary to God's um, being. So when we don't have God, we tend to live for the things and towards the things that are not of God. And it takes God to live for God. And so we cannot trust our heart. We can search uh, man's intellect. We can read as many books as we want. We can believe so passionately about something that maybe a certain sin isn't a sin, that this is really what life is all about. And we can believe it and be willing to die for it, but it doesn't make it truth. Just like someone, as foolish of an example as it is, saying that 5 plus 5 equals 7 and being willing to die for it, well, that is wonderful that they have such zeal for their belief, but just because they believe it doesn't make it true. So we need to be willing to look at ourselves and understand that we are a finite people with finite thinking, and our intellect and reasoning is not strong um, as it should be unless the Lord is with it. Obviously, there are many renowned intellectuals who were agnostic and atheists who have contributed to society. But in the end, the heart is extremely deceitful and sick when it comes to things of sin. And if we look in our day and age with certain things such as uh, abortion, homosexuality, um, sins such as these that are have become prominent, it's okay to get a sex change, people in their hearts are going to say that this is okay and have strong beliefs for it because the heart is deceitful and sick. But when we look at the Word of God, we know that God created them in His image, man Male and female, he created them. And we know that true marriage is between a male and a female. Uh, we know that it, that's what it takes to continue to populate the earth. It's just the natural way to go about things, and it's the way that God created it. We know that life is in the womb. We now have science uh, discoveries. We can type in on YouTube and type in, I think it's... Um, the light of conception or something of the sort and we can now see when the sperm hits the egg and combines with it there is a spark of light that comes into being at the moment those two come together so we have the scientific proof to show that it is in fact a person within the womb and obviously with sex change God knew exactly how we were to be born we were to be born as a male or we were to be born as a female now I know there are very extremely rare cases of uh, androgyny where a person is born with both uh, private parts and this is something that takes extreme discernment and understanding and prayer to go before the Lord as to which um, one should go um, but the reality is that for most beings we're all born either male or female and that's the way that God intended it to be and there are always underlying proof or underlying uh, reasonings and distortions of why we choose to um, believe a certain way that is contrary to scripture but when it comes down to it it's because our heart is desperately sick and deceitful and we are in need of someone to save it to cleanse it and to purify it and that can only be done by the blood of Christ the true Christ because there's a false Jesus being preached out there the true Christ that's preached on repentance and forgiveness love and grace but also 
wrath and justice, the wrath that is to come. So we need to be willing to give our hearts to God, but then allow Him to sanctify it. Because He is the God that searches the, our ways, He searches our heart, and He tests our mind. And whatever is lingering within that is contrary to God, and if we truly have a desire to please God, He will convict us and make us know that that is not the way. But if we choose to deceive ourselves and don't want to allow conviction to have its place, which is one of the most important gifts given by God because it shows us the correct path, then God is going to allow us to believe what we want to believe and will face his justice and wrath that is to come. And those who choose to live the life that they want to believe, uh, eventually God will give them over to a reprobate mind and they'll be without excuse because no one, God doesn't send anyone to hell. People choose to go to hell. And what is hell? Hell is, um, it's a lot of things, but ultimately it is the withdrawing of God's presence and all that is good and loving and holy. All of that will be extracted from hell and people will be placed in a position of solitude where darkness can be felt and where um, people will get no rest and day and night there will be torment. Not torture, torment. And the torment is the solitude, not being heard or listened to, and not having the feeling of ever having love or goodness ever again. So may we open ourselves to God and what his word has to say. He is the God that searches the heart and tests the mind, and he knows all things, for he created all things. He created us in the image of him, and he knows us better than we ever will know ourselves. And so because of that, we need to be willing to trust him that he knows exactly what he's doing. He has said exactly what he wanted to say in the scriptures, and he wants to draw us nearer and closer to him. But we must be willing to repent and to uh, agree with what scripture has said, that our heart naturally is wicked and sick, and it is most definitely in need of a savior.